Donald Trump was seeking to delay the criminal case filed by special counsel Jack Smith in a Florida federal courthouse. Trump seems to be using his co-defendant Walt Nauta as a pawn with Nauta filing a bizarre motion earlier in the day requesting that the status conference scheduled for July 14th be continued because Walt Nauta says that one of his attorneys who he just hired is not prepared. The other attorney who's an out-of-state attorney is in trial. Special counsel Jack Smith then immediately clapped back within minutes with his own opposition filing. And moments before we went live, one of Donald Trump's lawyers, Christopher Keiss, made a filing, and it was a fairly reasonable one, saying we could hold the status conference on July 18th. However, as we are recording this, we still have not seen the filings by Donald Trump requesting a trial date. I've predicted that Donald Trump's lawyers are going to seek a 2025 trial date, but we will keep you posted when we see those filings, which could draw a minute. While we are live. Also, the Trump appointed federal prosecutor in Delaware, David Weiss, sent yet another letter to GOP leaders. You know, by watching the Midas Touch Network, he sent two already to the House Republicans, specifically one addressed to Jim Jordan. But the most recent one was to MAGA Republican Senator Lindsey Graham, essentially saying, can you please just stop lying about the criminal investigations that I'm doing into Hunter Biden? The Trump appointed prosecutor explains in the letter that you've got this no nothing fake whistleblower liar again. And look, at all times, Weiss is saying I had full control over the criminal investigation and y'all just don't know what you're talking about. Let's talk about Fulton County. The Fulton County grand jury set to hear evidence and ultimately vote on the criminal indictment of Donald Trump for election interference in Georgia in 2020. The selection process starts this week, starts on Tuesday, July 11th. We expect yet another criminal indictment to be handed down by this grand jury once it's impaneled. Here's evidence, sees the report by the prior special purpose grand jury. We believe that indictment's going to be handed down between July 31st and August 18th. So stay tuned there. One of the GOP's latest fake whistleblowers attacking the Biden administration, someone by the name of Gal Luft, who Republicans claim went missing. Well, he was just indicted today by the Department of Justice for essentially being a Chinese spy trying to influence the Trump administration. And he was also indicted for essentially being a criminal international arms dealer uh, for Iran and Libya, among other countries. And unlike the GOP, in this unsealed indictment, the DOJ lays out the evidence, the messages being sent by Gal Luft. And by the way, Gal Luft is somebody who MAGA Republican leaders just yesterday or day before were saying he should receive immunity. This is a, a very, very credible person. We need to help Gal Luft no matter what we can do. Well, Turns out, like all of MAGA Republicans' machinations, this one is yet again criminal. Also, speaking of which, MAGA Republican leader Steve Bannon, who, like other MAGA Republicans, just doesn't pay his bills, lost a lawsuit brought against him by his former law firm. Bannon was ordered to pay $470. $5,000 in a summary judgment motion that was uh, granted for the law firm. And again, these people, again, th th yes, they're fascists and they're incompetent and they're also just grifters who don't pay their bills morally and financially bankrupt. And again, speaking of which, the Republican state party leadership now has been taken over by the MAGA Republicans, and they are not just morally bankrupt, but like the MAGA Republicans we always talk about, they are financially bankrupt, <laughs> and especially in critical swing states. They've just run out of money. And now what we're hearing about, like each week there's a story about this, physical fights fist fights taking place. I mean, the latest one happened over the weekend in Michigan, where one of the state committee leaders says that 
one of the uh, Republican attendees just ran up to him and kicked him in the balls. That's ex that's an exact quote from the Republican leader. The other person says that he was punched by the Republican leader. It's a he said, he said of MAGA fascists. What the heck is going on there? And also you've got, I'm not done, I'm not done with the intro yet. I'm not done with the intro yet. Okay. I got a suit. I got I got I got to wrap Looking it up. Good. And you got the suit on right now. And the Arizona College Republicans are holding holding an event with an actual Nazi as well as the QAnon shaman. But the media is very worried that President Biden wore shoes without socks, went to a beach. Um, and I think there was an expose written in Axios that uh, President Biden gets mad when people show up to meet, show up to meeting un unprepared. Come on, Axios. I'm wearing a suit. So the intro went a little bit longer than usual because I'm just happy wearing the suit. Brett, Jordy, how are you? Well, Ben, you're looking good. I'm doing fantastic. Yeah, you know, I I realize that we really do this show at the perfect time. It seems like always right as we're about to go live, there's just a flurry of breaking news that comes in. We really get to bring the people the most up to date information possible, uh, which wasn't used. It didn't used to be the case when we used to record the show in the morning and then have it later. We'd be like, that's oh, right. No. When we used to record right. at like one, one, right? 1 PM yeah, Eastern? yeah. It's it's wow. a whole different ball game when you're actually live, live, and yeah. Yes, we are live, live here on the Midas Touch Network. And I'm not going to say that much else because we have so much to get into. But Jordy, how's it going today? I'm doing great. Ben, some would say that purple and a navy blue suit don't go together. I'm not going to say that. I think you look really sharp. I think you pull off that look. <laughs> but some would argue that those two colors I like don't it. go together. I, I, Is that I, again, I like it. I, I think he's crushing the suit look. If you're only listening on audio, you're missing out. Ben, I don't know. Ben, it the, sounds like you're saying some nine. will. It sounds like you're saying some will say as a substitute, but not for, me. So I no. So I, I'm on record that. saying that Ben looks really sharp. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. I'll What's buy up, it. What's you know up? who's not looking <laughs> sharp right now? <laughs> Every single MAGA Republican. Uh, James Comer's not looking sharp right all. Ron Johnson from Wisconsin's not looking sharp right now, or frankly ever. I mean, these people were on this ridiculous media tour standing up for this individual who was the, the indictment was just unsealed you know earlier today right before the show this individual by the by the name of Gail Luft you have to get your fake whistleblower stories kind of organized because it's a it, you can get confused because the MAGA Republicans make up a different one every single week because I think last week we were talking about the Russian oligarch who the MAGA Republicans wanted to bring into Congress and give testimony. Here's the thing. It's ridiculous that they're even like, hey, we need Vladimir Putin's buddy to testify before Congress against President Biden. But then even the oligarch was like, yeah, that shit didn't happen. Excuse me. Is it wearing a suit? I, cry, I curse now. That stuff, <laughs> did, <laughs> you know, even, even the oligarch was like, yeah, that didn't happen at all. You're just lying. Like that, 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 that never actually happened. But when you Brett, lose the Russian I, oligarchs. Oof. Right. <laughs> exactly. Tell me. But about Brett, it. but Brett, you love this Gail Luff story. So I want to throw it to you. But first, I want to play what James Comer was saying just this past week. So first, let's do Comer. And then I'm going to show you Ron Johnson. But this is MAGA Republican James Comer talking about Gail Luff. And we'll explain this DOJ unsealed indictment. Play this clip. No, he's very credible. And the people on MSNBC who made fun of me when I said uh, we had an informant that was missing, they should feel like fools right now. They are fools. Uh, and this is their worst nightmare because, uh, again, this is a credible witness that the FBI flew all the way to Brussels to interview and sent several agents to interview. This guy looks like the incarnation of like <laughs> fascist SpongeBob SquarePants. Like, <laughs> He's very square. Yeah. You know, they, they, absolutely. So let me show you now. This is so, so very credible. MSNBC, blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure MSNBC is really kicking themselves today. I'm sure they really, I'm sure they really <laughs> feel incredibly embarrassed today by calling this guy out. They must just feel so ashamed of themselves. No, Comer, Comer, Comer. So James Comer, times? just so people remember, because we take it for granted, James Comer chairs the like one of the most powerful House committees, the House Oversight Committee. And James Comer, who we just showed you as well, um, before being in the House Oversight, very credible allegations from 
uh, his former girlfriend that she that he forced her to get an abortion and then covered it up, that he abused her. It's a common theme we're going to hear about with these MAGA Republicans. But let me show you MAGA Republican Ron Johnson from Wisconsin, who previously spent a July 4th in Russia with Vladimir Putin. This is what he had to say about this fake whistleblower, Gail Luft, who was just indicted a day or two before the indictment. Play this clip of John. They arrested him in Cyprus to silence him. They could have gone to Israel. He resides in Israel. We have extradition treaties, but they instead arrest him in Cyprus. Now, he, he's literally fleeing for his life right now. He, he's, he's on the run. Uh, he's an important witness. He needs to be granted immunity to be able to testify and tell his story. Well, how needs to be granted immunity, Brett. That was before the indictment was unsealed today. That was about a separate incident. Yeah. So they knew that he was a fugitive who was yeah. an international fugitive on the run. But today, let's talk about what happened with the DOJ's unsealed indictment, Brett. Well, the Justice Department just indicted him for a whole bevy of crimes. I'll pull up the press release that the DOJ just released. And here's the statement from the Southern District of New York. U.S. attorney announces charges against co-director of Think Tank for acting as an unregistered foreign agent, trafficking in arms, violating U.S. sanctions against Iran, and making false statements to federal agents. And let me just be as clear as possible here. So Gal Luft was a... Uh, he, he, He's a citizen both of the United States and of Israel. He has citizenship in both places. Luft is also an unregistered agent of China. He was working for China, um, and that's part of this indictment, a big part of this indictment, uh, which we still need to go through, by the way, with a fine-tooth comb, because I think this is even far bigger than anyone is even giving it credit for at this moment in time, just mm -hmm. based on my initial skim through of some of the parts of this piece. Um, but let's just be clear about what... What the Republican Party did now that we know this information. And just to really bring the projection that they put out there full circle right now, the Republican Party, in the most basic terms, was working with a Chinese spy to try to take down the president of the United States and attack his son. And not only that, people, not only that, they wanted to give the Chinese spy immunity. They wanted to protect him. It's the same thing we saw before with the Russian oligarch. If you remember from the clips that we showed you here on the Midas Touch podcast just a few short weeks ago, they would have, they would, Jim Jordan, James Comer, they would go on all these bizarre right wing fascist networks and they'd go, Well, what are you doing to protect this guy? And they would go, Oh, well, we need to do everything we can to protect this Russian oligarch. We need to make sure this Russian oligarch is safe and that this Russian oligarch is protected. They continue to seek out enemies of the United States of America in order to destroy the United States of America. At what point do you not stand up and go, this is some criminal stuff that we are witnessing, and you do not have the ability to evade responsibility just because you are a member of Congress. This is one of the most blatant examples of corruption, one of the most blatant examples of the weaponization of the government imaginable that we are all witnessing. This needs to be front page news, not Joe Biden didn't wear socks with his sneakers. How about the Republican Party colluding with our enemies, with our adversaries to try to destroy the United States? Let's be real, people. Let's be real. This indictment is filled with text messages and emails and other communications from Luft setting up these deals. You know, how do we show that um, you know, weapons and oil is not coming from Iran, but let's just say it's coming from the UAE. How do we basically launder it so that it doesn't look like it's Iranian? How do we how do we introduce other Chinese spies to at that point Donald Trump? And how do we get people whose interests are advancing? Um, the government of, of China's interest, how do we get them into positions of power in the Trump administration? There are emails and messages like that in this indictment. And that's the thing. That is what's called evidence. Evidence. Whereas the MAGA Republicans say, you know, we've got 17, I wonder where they even come, 17 audio recordings. It's like all, all in of President Biden 
bribing officials in China. We've got 17 messages, 17 messages of bribing officials in China, in Ukraine, all over the place. We've got it. All right, where, where, where is it? Well, 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 you see, it's possible the audio doesn't exist, but somebody told somebody who told somebody who told somebody who filled out a form and made a complaint about President Biden. But well, 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 who's the ultimate source? Yeah, it's it's an oligarch from Ukraine who is sympathetic to Vladimir Putin. Like, like what? Th that is what you are funneling to the American people? And they do this every single week. And you would just say, Brett, like if this happened just once, mm -hmm. one time as a licensed lawyer, you, you, you lose your license. You can't just make up things like that. And that's the thing. Like Jim Jordan, James Comer, like these are not serious people. How as the MAGA Republicans do you put Jim Jordan again? the head of the Judiciary Committee, who's not a licensed lawyer. He just rolls up his sleeves and just spread constant disinfo. But what? Missing Biden witness thing, it follows the same trajectory of how these MAGA Republican conspiracy theories spread, right? So you start off with, and this, it always starts off in Rupert Murdoch's fascist echo chamber, and it yep. often comes from same reporters. So it starts with this time, Miranda Devine is her name, and she writes for the New York Post. She's like a defamer in chief. Like she just literally just she lies. lies, just lies. Everything she says, everything she says is a lie. So the New York Post puts it in print first. So then what happens next? Then next you have Sean Hannity and Fox go, well, hmm. there's now a report that says it. Well, it's a report that's made by your sister company, the New York Post. So you're now saying, well, here's a report that says that. And here's a video that Miranda Devine from the New York Post got an exclusive on. OK, so then that gets platformed on their digital through Hannity. Then it gets put on their main platform um, on Fox and in this case, the Maria Bartiroma show. And then the MAGA Republican leaders in the House of Representatives and the Senate, they then realize, OK, if I want to get on Fox, all I got to do is go all in on this guy. And I'm going to say that and the, the more ridiculous thing I say about him, the better. He should get immunity, Re uh, immunity. <laughs> talking about and then that goes on fox then it's proven to be false it's proven to be completely defamatory and then you know what they do do they apologize for it no do they say we're sorry folks we lied to you and it was dangerous no they move on to the next one and mm -hmm. the next one and the next one. And, you know, large media networks, what do they do by and large? They talk about President Biden, stupid stuff like, OK, this is the New York Times, right? This is a New York Times reporter who reported how President Biden was not wearing socks. President Board's Air Force One at Dover Air Force Base as he departs for London, England. Biden was n not in socks with his sneakers. Wow. Wow. Biden not wearing Come on. socks. Uh, at least no. he wasn't rocking a tan suit also, or like it would have been <laughs> just, it would have been the would've, end. Would have had to shut down the economy. Yeah, we'd have to, yeah we'd, uh, Biden should have just, you know, just resigned right then and there if he was rocking the tan suit. I mean, that's just an offense too far. It even beats majority, it, be, it beats Ben's purple tie. I mean, the, 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 the tan suit thing, pretty, pretty egregious, pretty, pretty egregious. Well, okay, well, <laughs> Look, What's purple not, to into, not to feed into sock like, gear, but like. I, I kind of think he may have been wearing, not to get into, I think he was wearing socks. I think Could he was wearing some like no show those, socks. Yeah, yeah. Some no show socks. Those yeah. are very hot these days. I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah, come on. Dude, a, dude, a dude, high dude, ankle shot. You have no idea. Dude, you have do no better. Idea. Do better, do better. But yeah, better, better talking about the laundering of the lies. I mean, <laughs> the laundering of the lies. So the other one, right, MAGA Republicans, I assume they thought, okay, there's the Trump prosecutor in Delaware, David Weiss. So David Weiss, come on, man, just give us what we want. Just say that Merrick Garland pressured you, and that's why you entered into the plea agreement that you did with Hunter Biden. And so David Weiss, Trump-appointed prosecutor, top prosecutor from Delaware, known as a United States attorney, Trump appointed him in 2018. He initiated the Hunter Biden criminal investigation. Then it was, it was well within the ability for... 
I, I'm hearing an echo right now, but I don't know if you're hearing an echo at all right now. Anyway, I was, I was hearing an echo. I'm sorry. Were you not hearing an echo? I heard myself. Brett uh, looks really guilty. Brett's face is really guilty. <laughs> People were complaining about the sound on you, so I was looking it up, and I forgot that my sound's still on. So, <laughs> so I was hearing I like, trouble. I, like so. heard my, I, I heard myself talking. I is muted my sound. Not great. Right I, 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 I muted one, but I didn't mute the other. I, I, I'm not sure. See, I, I, we, we, we why you just, live. Why would we're you live. leave me? Let, let, let's address this though before you're going to leave me hanging like I don't hear my own voice. Like I don't hear my own voice. I, I, I thought. <laughs> At me, right? I usually would mute myself to do a technical issue, but, but go on, go on. Anyway, see so, this, so this, 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 this Trump appointed prosecutor um, was responsible for the criminal investigation in 2018. President Biden was well within his rights to fire him because that's just what you do when the new administration comes in. You fire the old United States attorneys. It happens every time. But President Biden kept the prosecutor who was going after his own son. That's the only prosecutor. He may he maybe didn't fire one other Trump uh, appointed prosecutor, but Weiss was like the only one kept by Biden. So President Biden was basically like, Weiss, you could prosecute my you could prosecute my son. You can go after him. You know, that's absolutely fine. I'm not going to do anything. And Merrick Garland said to him, you can do whatever you want. Don't worry about it at all. You know, you could have whatever designation you want. And there's something called a special attorney designation, which is different than special counsel designation. Special attorney under a different U.S. code section allows a prosecutor in one state to prosecute crimes in a different state like California or D.C., in addition to the fact that he was in Delaware. And so in 2022, David Weiss asked Merrick Garland, would I get special attorney status, not special counsel status, special attorney status if I asked. And Merrick Garland says, do whatever you want. I'm not controlling this investigation. If you want to become special attorney status and you find crimes in other states, go for it. Ultimately, David Weiss didn't use the special attorney status. And now what the MAGA Republican lie was, was that David Weiss was claiming that he wanted to become a special counsel and that Merrick Garland denied him the right to become a special counsel, like the way Jack Smith is a special counsel. Like they got the whole story wrong, the MAGA Republicans, like just a totally false thing. So over the past few weeks, David Weiss has been writing letters, you know, to Jim Jordan, two letters, Jim Jordan. Listen, you're wrong. Just stop it. I had full authority. I had full control. And the MAGA Republicans were like, we still don't believe you. Lindsey Graham wrote, wrote him a letter. So now he responded to Lindsey Graham and he was just like in this letter. He goes, I recently explained this to Jim Jordan since the whistleblower allegations relate to a criminal investigation that's currently being prosecuted in the United States District Court for Delaware, I still have a duty to protect confidential law enforcement information and deliberative communications related to the case, as I likewise indicated. I welcome the opportunity to respond to these claims in more detail, but to clarify an apparent misperception and to avoid future confusion, I wish to make one point clear in this case. I have not requested special counsel designation pursuant to that statute. Rather, I had discussions with departmental officials regarding the potential appointment under 28 U.S.C. Section 515, which would have allowed me to file charges in a district outside of my own without the partnership of the local U.S. attorney. I was assured that I would be granted this authority if it proved necessary. And this assurance came months before the October 7th, 2022 meeting referenced throughout the whistleblower allegations. In this case, I followed the process outlined in my June 30 letter and have never been denied authority to bring charges in any jurisdiction. So this is what the Trump appointed prosecutor is saying. So do you think that Jim Jordan is satisfied? Do you think MAGA Republicans are like, well, thank you for responding. It wasn't the answer that we wanted, but we appreciate your candor, right? But by the way, we all make mistakes. Like sometimes Brett plays audio of me while <laughs> talking and blasts it in my face. Let me just say, I fixed, I fixed the, the issue live. while we were live and people seem pretty happy that I actually fixed it. I apologize for doubling your, your sound up while I did it. That was a mistake, but 
but, but sometimes, the results you know, we all make mistakes, but you know, what, what it requires is addressing them, addressing the mistake. And like, like Brett just did a, a, apology accepted, but what do you think, <laughs> what do you think that representative, <laughs> sure. what do you think, <laughs> what do you think that Jim Jordan did here? Did he say, you know what? I got this one wrong. We followed the evidence. That's what the evidence said. By the way, that's what the responsible thing is. If someone wants to show me stuff, Ben, you got this wrong. Can you do a correction? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. Especially when it comes to like seriously defaming people. But this is what Jim Jordan posted today because he's got the level of maturity of, you know, of, I guess, a MAGA Republican it says, this is what Jim Jordan posted. David Weiss says he wasn't denied special counsel status in the Hunter Biden case. An IRS whistleblower testified the opposite was true. Do you trust Biden's DOJ to tell the truth? I know you are, but what am I? You know, it's like, <laughs> what do you, what, what, I mean, it, it really is the level of discourse, the level of truth, the level of competency of MAGA Republicans is so in the gutter. It's not even a, it's not a political thing. It's a basic competence and truth thing. The Republican party is gone. It's MAGA Republicans. We are going to call them out each and every day here on the Midas Touch Network and on the Midas Touch podcast. We still have a lot of show, including the fact that show. you got MAGA, MAGA Republicans like punching each other and kicking each other. Like physically fighting each other. He, mm. he, he said, you, when there was an article about MAGA Republicans that starts off with, he kicked me in the balls and that this happens frequently, apparently in the MAGA Republican party. It's, it's, called, like, the it's just called the Tuesday. <laughs> it's just called that's just called another day in the in their world but uh, talk about that let's talk about some special counsel jack smith filings let's talk about the fulton county grand jury that and more after this quick break jewelry is having a big moment right now and with hundreds of products popping up in your feed every day it could be hard to find a brand you trust alex and ani has been creating meaningful jewelry for over 20 years designing pieces that connect you with all of life's important moments with an emphasis on value, there's truly something for everyone. You might be most familiar with their signature charm bangle. This bracelet literally created the category of meaningful jewelry and had you stacking charms from your wrist to your elbow. This piece is an icon for a reason. Completely size inclusive, each bracelet is adorned with a symbol designed to tell your story and express your unique style. Beyond the bangle, you'll find stylish, affordable jewelry for every occasion, from classic pieces to bold statement looks. Don't know where to start? Alex and Ani makes it easy to unpack the trends you're after and sprinkle in your personality too. Each piece comes with a personalized message and meaning, truly making it the perfect gift. You can take comfort in knowing that you're shopping with a socially conscious brand as well. To date, Alex and Ani has donated over $60 million to nonprofits worldwide, connecting fashion and philanthropy in an easy, fun, affordable way. Visit alexandani.com right now to discover the confidence that comes with a perfectly accessorized piece of jewelry. Right now, Alex and Ani is offering our audience 20% off with code MIDAS at checkout. Again, head to alexandani.com, that's A-L-E-X-A-N-D-A-N-I.com, and use code MIDAS at checkout for 20% off your order. Let's stop cutting down trees to make toilet paper. Now it's true, humans are cutting down tens of thousands of trees every day just to supply the American need for toilet paper. And the worst part is that when we use trees for toilet paper, it's just one use and done. It obviously can't be recycled or reused, so it just goes straight into our water system. That's why I made the switch to real paper. Real is 100% bamboo, so we're using a plant that grows fast, can be harvested and regenerated, think like the grass in your lawn, and doesn't impact the entire ecosystems of forests. Real is the best kind of eco-friendly product because it doesn't feel like you're sacrificing something to help the earth. In fact, it feels like an upgrade. It's shipped free to my door in plastic-free packaging and I could schedule it on a subscription so that it comes exactly when I need it. My favorite thing about Real, without getting too personal, is that it's super comfortable in those sensitive areas. Real Paper is available in easy, hassle-free subscriptions or for one-time purchases on their website. All orders are conveniently delivered to your door with free shipping in 100% recyclable plastic-free packaging. If you head to 
realpaper.com slash Midas and sign up for a subscription using my code Midas at checkout, you'll automatically get 30% off your first order and free shipping. That's R-E-E-L P-A-P-E-R dot com slash Midas or enter our promo code Midas to get 30% off your first order plus free shipping. Let's make a change for good this year and switch to real paper. Real is a paper for the planet. This is sponsored by Miracle Made Sheets. Now, whether you want to get more fit or be a better parent or get more done at work, there's one thing that will help and that's better sleep. With Miracle Made Sheets, you can tap into the power of self cooling temperature regulation, which has been shown to improve deep sleep quality by over 20%. Now, using silver infused fabrics originally inspired by NASA, Miracle Made Sheets are thermoregulating and designed to keep you at the perfect temperature all night long, so you get better sleep every night. These sheets are infused with silver that prevent up to 99.7% of bacterial growth leaving them to stay cleaner and fresh three times longer than other sheets. No more gross odors. Miracle sheets are luxuriously comfortable without the high price tag of other luxury brands and feel as nice, if not nicer, than bed sheets used from some of the five-star hotels. Stop sleeping on bacteria. Clean sheets means less bacteria to clog your pores and fewer breakouts and other skin problems. Go to trymiracle.com slash Midas to try Miracle Made Sheets today. And with Mother's Day and Father's Day right around the corner, this is the perfect way to give someone you love the gift of better and more luxurious sleep. Save over 40% off and be sure to use our promo code MIDAS at checkout to save even more and get three free towels. Miracle is so confident in their product that it's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash Midas and use the code Midas to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash Midas to treat yourself. We are back live here on the Midas Touch podcast, Ben, Brett, and Jordy. I saw some people in the comments, they say, why does Ben say balls? So weird. And balls. I think I do have balls. an emphasis, balls. <laughs> <laughs> there are certain words with us being brothers and from Long Island that we don't even realize we say differently because is one of those words that people always balls, call me out on. I guess is Because. Balls. <laughs> okay. Water. Well, that's <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't, don't before, the before the episode gets completely before the episode gets completely derailed it's critical that we talk about the fact that the MAGA republican takeover of state republican parties is complete you know we talk about the MAGA republicans at the federal office positions in congress and senate like we just did with jim jordan and lindsey graham and james comer but the Republican Party in states, and especially like critical swing states, right? Like Arizona and Michigan, those parties are now MAGA Republican parties, and they are built in the image of their cult leader, a cult leader who says things like this on a daily basis. This is what Donald Trump said today. Was crooked Joe Biden on cocaine? When he instructed the FBI DOJ to illegally invade my home, Mar-a-Lago, in complete and total violation of my Fourth Amendment rights, was he on cocaine or various other substances when he, for the first time in U.S. history, had his political opponent, who was leading him in the polls by a lot, indicted and arrested twice, if you include the DOJ, that the DOJ runs the Manhattan DA's office. We are a nation in decline, exclamation point, exclamation point. I mean, besides the fact that every aspect of this statement (laughs) is false, including the fact that Mar-a-Lago actually isn't your home. You live there, but it is a resort. Yeah, that it's kind of weird not- that you live there, honestly, dude. It's like you live in a re- your resort. It's kind of just a strange, okay. it's an odd thing. It's not normal. You break down in complete and total <laughs> violation of my Fourth Amendment rights. Well, if you believe that, then why don't you file a case saying that your Fourth Amendment rights have been violated? 
file, file that motion, see what happens. Then he goes and lies about President Biden on cocaine. He lies that he's leading in the polls. He lies that the DOJ runs the Manhattan District Attorney's Office. But he does hate our country. So anytime he has the opportunity to say something like we are a nation in decline, mm -hmm. he will project all of the key. Donald Trump and MAGA Republicans hate the United States of America. Let's be clear. And, you know, there's a reason. I, I don't see a lot of Americans um, leaving to live in Russia, okay, right now. And they seem to love Vladimir Putin and Russia spending 4th of July with them, right? Their archetype of what they would want to do here is Vladimir Putin's Russia. But Go, go for it then. Go, go, go live there if that's the way you feel about it. This is what Donald Trump's next post is. He goes, the public is demanding to know the White House cocaine story. Just like I quickly proved security tapes from Mar-a-Lago on the boxes hoax, the White House has a security camera far more than Mar-a-Lago all over the place, especially the location in question. They 100% know who it is. If they don't release information, it means they destroyed the tapes and cocaine was for use by Hunter and probably Crooked Joe in order to give this total disaster of a president little life and energy. I mean, again, remember the day where a candidate who spelled potato wrong was disqualifying. A weird windsurfing video. You are over. Going woohoo could totally crush your political career and make you look unstable. It's actually a but, That's what it was. And, and by the way, one of, one of the, the favorite. Check. I woohoo, I think I'm thinking of the Mario movie. You're thinking right Mario, but, oh. but that <laughs> here we go. Um, but that would be disqualifying. <laughs> you have Donald, you have people, Donald Trump, MAGA Republicans. They give immunity to Chinese spies, right? They want to, um, they, they they want to give immunity to Russian oligarchs who they call whistleblowers. And then they just lie and say that their opponents on cocaine. So I just wanted to I wanted to start before going yeah. into the states themselves. Listen, he can't he can't be sleepy Joe and cocaine Joe at the same time. Pick pick a lane. <laughs> this is pick, a great point. <laughs> pick, pick, pick a lane because those two things are mutually exclusive. You cannot be both. So Trump, even this one for you, pretty weak sauce. Just pick, pick a lane, pick a lane. That's all. I'm so saying. Donald Trump has declared bankruptcy over and over and over again with his companies. He doesn't pay his bills. He cheats on his taxes. His world is total chaos, right? So a mirror image of that I mean, Republicans who once prided themselves on competence, right, organizational structure, that was their whole thing, that we're organized and we're detailed oriented and we're data driven. That was their whole game. And now it's just chaos and shambles. So at the cult leader level, because it's not at the top political level, you've got Donald Trump on a daily basis saying things like that. So when we look, for example, of who was the leader of the GOP in Arizona? Who was the top person who, by the way, squandered all the Republican money on election denying conspiracy cases and spending it on defending Donald Trump and defending herself from trying to overthrow a democracy? Let's show you who the leader is again. This isn't what the MAGA Republicans do where they pick some random person who's 19 years old, who nobody's ever heard of, and, and who says something that not a lot of people agree with. And you go, oh, you see, that's the Democrat. I, I don't know. I don't know who that person is, okay? That's not Nancy Pelosi. That's not Hakeem Jeffries. That's not President Biden, okay? That's not Chuck Schumer or Dick Durbin. That's not a Democratic leader. Okay, this is this was the person who was leading the Arizona Republican Party, Kelly Ward. Play this clip. Hey, stand up if you're ultra mega! Ultra mega! Proud member of the Orange Mafia! 
Arizona's Republican Party on March 31st had less than 50,000 in cash reserves in its state and federal bank accounts to spend on overhead expenses compared to $770,000. It had the same point for at the same point four years ago. But heck, you are ultra mega. <laughs> you notice I always leave it at the end of that clip too. Like I, I, either the audience doesn't react at all or the microphone stopped picking up the audience noise. But after she says, I am proud member of the orange mafia she does like a weird like kind of jig to like like anybody with me anybody with me <laughs> anyone 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 and like there's like no reaction and she just makes the funniest gesture of like please clap please clap and so i always leave like three yeah. seconds after she says the line in that clip because it Brett, brings me she so was, much joy she was the leader the number one position in the arizona republican party okay so now who is the number one leader of the Republicans in Michigan? A once very proud Michigan Republican Party that was organized, that was a formidable force, that was doing a lot of stuff that I don't agree with at all. But to say they were disorganized would not be correct. They used to be a formidable force in the state of Michigan. But now, with Trump as the cult leader, let's show the video of Christina Caramo, <laughs> the new leader of the Michigan Republican Party, talking first about a bald eagle eating a possum, which shows her about globalism and somehow President yeah. Biden is bad. Play the clip. So I was taking my walk this morning and look what I ran across, a vulture eating a possum. And as soon as I saw that, you know what I thought about? Us, the American people, as the possum and the vulture is the globalist political left. And the sad part about it is most people don't realize it because they distract you with a bunch of little stupid stuff like, look at that misogyny, look at that homophobia, look at that racism, the poor people, we're going to help you all. So people are like, oh, they're for the little guys and I'm little, so they're going to help me. It's a distraction. It is a ruse. They are trying to set up a globalist system with one economic, one religious, and one political system for us all to adhere to. And America is in the way. That is why they hate Donald Trump so much. He's getting in the way of their agenda. And they use these foolish little celebrities to sell it to you guys. That don't you care about people to stop guns? What is the Second Amendment for? You really trust governments that much to not kill us? Quit being naive. Stalin, Mao, Hitler, okay, uh, Fidel Castro, Che Guevara. Governments have done atrocious things to their people. Are you that naive to think it could never happen here? So that was, is the leader of Michigan's Still Republican is. Party. But by the way, she's got something else to say about demonic possession. Uh, let's play that. If a person has demonic possession, I know it's going to sound really crazy me saying that for some people. They're going to be like, what? But having intimate relationships with people who are demonically possessed or oppressed, I strongly believe that a person opens themselves up to possession. Demonic possession is real. How people become possessed, I don't know all the details of it. But I would surmise that the sexual licentiousness in our culture is a lot of spiritual things that are going wrong. So I see a lot of people in the comments saying, Ben, these are your favorite videos. And they are. <laughs> <laughs> they are. Be because it makes a broader point. Mm -hmm. And I do believe in repetition in making this point. That these are the people who Republicans want to make life and death decisions over you, your family, your neighbors, your friends, your colleagues, your community, your state, your country. And you have to remember what these people say, who they are, and how it is not just some issue of, oh, you got you know, Democrats, liberals, progressives, and then you got uh, Republicans who are conservatives. No, that's not that. That is not conservatism. OK, it isn't. That is crazy. OK, that is fascism. That is weird. That is idiocracy. That is problematic. That is Trumpism right there. That's not, oh, Ben, you just, you're attacking the conservative speech. That's conservative speech. A possum is eaten by a warthog and the blah, blah, blah. What the hell are you, what are you talking about? That's not, that's conservatism. It, it actually isn't. But the MAGA Republicans 
have mutated the Republican Party to be this thing that's not conservative. That's why I've been railing since we started Midas Touch. And people are catching on to it now because I see a lot more stories about it. Do not ever call these MAGA Republicans conservative. Mm -hmm. There's nothing conservative about their views. Supporting insurrectionists, denying elections, promoting anti-vax conspiracies, being hateful and intolerant towards everybody else. That, that, sorry, that, that's just being a MAGA Republican today. And I think it is important for the Democratic Party to be a party of progressives and liberals, but also to be very welcoming of independents, people who we disagree with too, who may be conservative, actually conservative. And let's talk about our democracy together. Let's have difficult conversations. Let's try to advance our country and let's do it competently. Because again, as we talked about last week, you look at what's happening in Arizona. They used to have at this time close to $800,000 on hand. Now they're basically bankrupt. They got like 50,000 bucks on hand. You're talking about the Michigan Republican Party. They used to have about $900,000 on hand two years ago as of March. And I think they have less than this now. They have about $116,000 on hand right now. And you know, see also is the same way in Trump's world. There's all this infighting and all of this drama. That's what takes place as well. And like we've reported frequently on fistfights taking place in these in these state Republican parties where people just like beat each other up. This was I want to give a shout out to Craig Mauger of the Detroit News for first reporting this. And as told by the Independent, but definitely shout out to the Detroit News there and shout out to local journalism that covers great stories like this. Um, this is the way the scene was described this weekend at a Michigan Republican Party event on Saturday where there was a altercation at the Doherty Hotel in Clare, Michigan, as members who have been feuding over the direction of leadership under Christina Caramo kind of all met together. And so in an interview with the Detroit News, James Chapman a Republican from Wayne County said he had traveled to Claire, Michigan for the meeting of Republicans, but was forced to listen through it through a locked door. They locked out people. It was, <laughs> it, it, it was then that Red Mark, De, that Mark DeYoung chairman of the Claire County Republican party approached the door, saw someone giving him the middle finger through a small window and he opened it. Quote, he kicked me in the balls. He kicked me in the balls, he screamed as soon as he opened up the door. Mr. DeYoung explained his story that then Mr. Chapman ran at him after kicking him in the balls and body slammed him into a chair. For his part, Mr. Chapman alleges that Mr. DeYoung swung at him and said, I'll kick your ass. Continuing, Mr. Chapman says he removed his glasses, took Mr. DeYoung by the legs and knocked him down. When you quote, when you see me taking off my glasses, I'm ready to rock. Multiple police officers <laughs> at the scene divided up this fight. And by the way, this isn't the only fight that like took place. Like the Washington Post reported on, on another fight like this that happened um, in June, how the night before an April state party meeting, two GOP officials got into a physical altercation in a hotel bar over an attempt to expel members. This video is great. We have this video, right? right before. Yeah, we, we, we have this one. I wish we had a video of the recent fight and hopefully okay, I, I wish we do too. But this one, like they're like drunk and at uh, like a, a bar at a restaurant. And then like, it's almost like an ultra MAGA moment because like while they're yelling at each other, one of the ladies is like, by the power vested in me, <laughs> you are expelled. And then they like hit each other. It's, a, it's straight out of Parks and Recreation like or Veep. Like this is beyond parody. I'll play the clip for the audio listeners. Try Do, do your best to listen and, and make out what they're saying here. Because it is extremely funny, though admittedly just a little bit hard to hear. Here's the clip. Get your cigarette out of here! Get your cigarette out of here! Now we got a problem! Get 
Now we got a problem. She just fucking. Now we got a problem. Hey, move along. Hey, move along. You have a law. You have a law. Right now, let's go around the room. 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 Right now, let's go around these are the people who are taking away a woman's right to control yep. her body, though. These are the people who are banning and burning books right here, okay? These are the people who are taking away American people's freedoms right here. And so while it is important for us to point them out and, yes, have a good smile about it and let's we could have a laugh or two over how ridiculous these people are, what we have to remember is, these people, this is not normal political behavior. Like this is this is some gutter, disgusting idiocracy meets fascist crap, Jordy. By the way, this isn't the first time. Like, like this doesn't just happen in a vacuum in state houses. We saw this on the House floor. Remember when Mike <laughs> Rogers lunged at Matt Gates during the vote? This is yeah. like this isn't a unique thing to them. This Mar is that Marjor compound. Marjorie Taylor Greene calls Lauren Boebert a little bitch. Like, like this is that compounding. This is that compounding interest of craziness that Ben loves so much play out over and over and over again, and it's resonating with the American people. You can't you can't associate with this party anymore. It's impossible. I the love issue, this quote the issue because of the compounding interest before Brett goes is the word interest. Interest. It's it's just the uh, word interest just doesn't add anything. It's, just compound. Yes, it does. It, it's it a metaphor. Just be compounding craziness, though. but but metaphor. it's a uh, it's. I'm biting here, my heels in on this one. It's not a metaphor. <laughs> Joe, whatever you want to be, it's Jordy's art. It's Jordy's art. Jordy's allowed to express his art however yeah. he so pleases. So it's yeah. all good. Um, now th this quote, which uh, I'm not sure if you read before, but even if you did, it's it's worth reading again because just setting the scene of this moment to me is so freaking hilarious. We're so divided, Mister De Young said from the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> I just wish we could come. I just wish we could come together. I mean, it's truly, you couldn't write this stuff without people going Put give that me a freaking... on a billboard, man. That is hilarious. We're so divided, Mr. DeYoung said from the hospital. The cops were called. They had to go to the hospital. Like, this was a serious fight. This was like a serious fight. They should, they, they honestly, they should not call them like the, the media should not even refer to them as conservatives. I'm not even sure they should call them Republicans. They should just call them like assholes or something like Jim, Jim Jordan, an asshole from Ohio. Uh, so, <laughs> it'd be more accurate. Look here, here, here's the Arizona college Republican United event. And I can't even believe that this is a that this is a tr a true thing, <laughs> like like that I'm actually looking at real life right now. So this is the event that they're at the so Arizona, these are the Arizona College Assholes United. See, it yeah, works. The Arizona every time. College Republicans, the guest speaker and supporters, the top headliner, Nazi Nicholas Fuentes, like an actual Nazi sympathizer, is the headliner. Uh, but then, guess who you also get to see? Jan, they call this is what they're calling it on the flyer. They say January 6th political prisoner Jake Chansley. That's the QAnon shaman um, who they are. They are they are they are <laughs> promoting the QAnon. Hard shaman. to believe the Arizona Republican Party just in general is having tough times, you know, funding themselves. I mean, it's it's beyond <laughs> it's beyond parity at this point. And then you've got one of the people who call themselves culture war criminal whatever whatever that is 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 uh, someone who's going to be speaking as well but um that's your modern day republican state party folks we still have a lot of show to discuss got to talk about what's going on with special counsel jack smith updates in his criminal case against donald trump also fulton county grand jury set to start being selected on Tuesday, July 11th. We're going to gear up and get ready for indictment watch there. Oh, and for all the people who are seeing those emojis right there, 
and throwing out those emojis. We are going to make other emojis. But if you're wondering, hey, I love these emojis. How can I do the emojis? Well, become a member of our YouTube page. How do you do that? You click the dollar sign on the bottom right of YouTube. You see it right there. There's a dollar sign right there. You could become a member. In fact, if you're already a member, you can gift memberships to other people and you could ask to receive a membership as a gift. We don't have any outside investors here at the Midas Touch Network at all. So the way that we're able to fund this operation is through things like that. I think it's a really fun way to do it. We could all have fun with the emojis and it helps support this independent media platform. Let's take a break. and We've got a lot more show when we come back. Now let's take a quick break to talk about our next partner, MOSH. As the years progress, it's so important to stay on top of your mental health and fitness. Frankly, life it gets busy, and sometimes you end up sacrificing good foods and snacks for unhealthy ones strictly because they may seem more convenient. Now whether at the gym, on the go, or between meals with the fam, MOSH protein bars are the smart snack to keep your brain and body fit-fueled and feeling good. With six delicious flavors, each mosh bar comes packed with 12 grams of protein and made with ingredients that support brain health like ashwagandha, lion's mane, collagen, and omega-3s. At 160 calories and only one gram of sugar, mosh protein bars are the guilt-free snack your brain and body will crave. Your brain, it's your number one tool, which is why mosh protein bars were mindfully formulated by some of the world's top neuroscientists and functional nutritionists. Founded by Patrick Schwarzenegger and Maria Shriver, Mosh is a mission-driven brain health and wellness company that donates a portion of all proceeds to support women's brain research through the Women's Alzheimer's Movement at Cleveland Clinic. I absolutely love Mosh protein bars. They're delicious. They're savory. They're the perfect smart snack to keep your brain and body fit-fueled and feeling good. We're constantly doing different videos or podcasts here or just a bunch of different tasks. So I'm able to enjoy Mosh protein bars easily and enjoyably throughout the day whenever I need it. Don't settle with a mediocre snack when you can nourish your body and mind with the fuel it needs to succeed. So whether you're at the gym, on the go, or just living your best life, Mosh protein bars will keep your brain and body fit fueled and feeling good. Head to moshlife.com slash Midas to save 20% off plus free shipping on your first six count trial pack. That's 20% off plus free shipping on your first six count trial pack, which includes all six mouthwatering flavors. M-O-S-H-L-I-F-E dot com slash Midas. And now let's take a quick break to talk about our next partner, Hold On. Plastic. It's everywhere. It's everywhere we look and not enough is being done about it. 100 billion plastic bags are used and then thrown away every year. Yeah, that plastic bag you see in the gutter or floating in a stream or washed up on the beach, multiply that by 100 billion. Yikes, am I right? But there's a better way, and it could start with a better bag. Hold On is a company born from the idea that there must be a better way to go about our daily chores. Now, trash bags and kitchen bags, they're necessary staples, but do they need to be 100% plastic? 100% no! Hold On trash and kitchen bags are heavy duty, plant-based, non-toxic, and 100% home compostable, which means they break down in weeks, not decades, without filling up our landfills or polluting our oceans. Hold On wants to be part of the growing movement away from single-use plastics, which, if you ask most experts, is the single worst kind of plastic. At every stage, production, disposal, decomposition, plastic bags are doing harm to our earth, our water, and even our bodies. Hold On is absolutely amazing. One, they're a woman-owned, woman-founded company. Two, the Hold On bags are incredibly durable and sleek. It's so good to know that what I'm using is plant-based, non-toxic, and 100% home compostable. To shop plant-based bags and replace single-use plastics all over your home, visit holdonbags.com slash Midas or enter Midas at checkout to save 20% off your order. Sustainability has never been more simple. That's H-O-L-D-O-N bags dot com slash Midas, M-E-I-D-A-S, or enter Midas to receive 20% off your order. Small things can lead to lasting change if we stop and say, hold on. Thank you, Hold On, for sponsoring this episode. 
We are back live here oh. on the Midas Touch podcast. And look, I really am appreciative of all of our sponsors. Look, as we build this pro-democracy media network for the media network to exist and to hire great correspondents and to get great editing and all of the videos, you know, you, you gotta you gotta have funding. That's just the way it works. And it is a great thing to have people who support pro-democracy content and great sponsors with great products that we use. So in the description to the podcast and in the description to the YouTube, one of the ways you can support the show as well is by supporting our sponsors. And we don't just pick random sponsors. I mean, we use all of the products of all of our sponsors and genuinely enjoy all of them. Although I did get called out that, hey, you guys have some great razor sponsors. Ben, why aren't you shaving um, in the suit? So, with the, <laughs> and, and so I, I thought that was a valid point, and I wanted to acknowledge the Rough, point. You know, oh, tough crowd, tough crowd, tough crowd. No, honestly, we have crowd. like the great, the greatest commenters in the world, the greatest people during these live chats. So like, cool. like I, I, I sometimes have to put Ben and jo or Jordy full screen during the show because <laughs> I am watching the comment section and just laughing and smiling at some of the comment, the commentary that comes through. You from know, the people watching these episodes. You know why? Because it's it's thoughtful, smart mm -hmm. discussion, and. One of the thesis, theses, thesis of the Midas to the size. Just say it confidently enough. Just, say, just nailed it with one of those three, hopefully. Is that we could have intelligent discourse, go over the evidence, go over the documents. We can just show the stuff and then have a real intelligent conversation about it. That doesn't really exist elsewhere, and that's one of the things I'm super proud of. You know, we were digging through the indictment over the uh, break of Gail Luft and trying to get more There's information. There's some crazy stuff in there. There's some crazy stuff in there, and it looks like individual one who's in there is Steve Bannon. It looks like CC one is Miles Guo, who's also under uh, indictment already. And so in this paragraph here, it talks about how Gail Luft, the defendant began sending in, remember, Chinese spy, began sending information to individual one, who we think is Steve Bannon, concerning, among other things, One Belt, One Road, later known as the Belt and Road Initiative, a foreign policy initiative of the China government, while in the United States, also invited individual one to what Luff described in an email as a private meeting in Washington, D.C., with the then chairman of CEFC China, who Luft wrote, quote, has a very close relationship with President Xi Jinping, the president of China. On or about September 12, 2016, Gail Luft, the defendant, sent CC1, Miles Guo, an email with the subject line, quote, quote, we nailed it. That included a link to an article announcing that individual one was advising a then candidate for the president of the United States, who was elected president two months later. You know why that's so fascinating and so deep and so many layers to unpack there, right, is that Miles Guo had always kind of acted like he was this dissident of China. And that story never fully made sense at all because there seemed to be a lot of representing the interests of it. So it seems to have been kind of a psyop or all projection and kind of just the lie representing the actual interest of the government under the veil of being a dissident. Because he was, well, I'm a dissident. I'm just out there to support the interest of the people, not the government. And then that used as a way to ultimately further the interest of Xi Jinping, the yeah. president. So when Donald Trump then says, all of this stuff about Joe Biden and China, Chinatown, China, 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 China. He is telling on himself right there. And and as we dig deeper into this, and by the way, that's just what we, I mean, it literally just broke before the show. Yeah. So as and by, and by the way, we're, we're, we're speculating on these names. So it's not confirmed that that's individual one or CC one. It, it, the co-conspirator could also be this guy, Patrick Ho, um, who's a former head of organization backed by Chinese energy conglomerate who was sentenced to three years in prison for international bribery and money laundering offenses by the Department of Justice in 2019. So there are a couple people who could be filling these uh, names as we're once again reading reading through this for the first time, but it does seem to be a Steve Bannon kind of op here that's at play once again. And so I wonder if we end up seeing anything else tied to 
Bannon here, uh, which links you directly to Trump world. Um, but this is a absolutely yep. fascinating, fascinating, fascinating indictment. And the fact that the Republican Party was, let's face it, for lack of a better word, colluding with a Chinese spy in order to damage the United States of America, in order to try to impeach a president of the United States. This, to me, feels like it should be a massive deal. I mean, this is this is like straight up treasonous, maybe not in the legal uh, sense of the term, but certainly in the definition that most people use the term in. This is absolutely anti-American. And once again, the projection from these people, the projection, while they are working with somebody who is an unregistered agent of the Chinese government to try to attack this country. And here's the thing, I'll, I'll go on record. If you've got 17 audio tapes of President Biden colluding and taking bribes with a foreign country, guess what? I'll think that President Biden should be impeached. But I'll even go a step further. If President Biden sent one... <laughs> QAnon meme. If he just posted it once on the Joe Biden Twitter account, you know, just, you know, you know, by the way, if if he if he threw out one Pepe the Frog, setting aside if, <laughs> one if Pepe. Biden threw out if he threw uh, out one Pepe the Frog post on his, you know, Instagram or Twitter account for all of the great things that he did from the Infrastructure Act to the Inflation Reduction Act to the PACT Act to the Chips Act, guess what? He would lose my support. <laughs> once if he just did it once you know and it wasn't like that he was hacked or something i would be like that's unforgivable why because you're supposed to have standards if you're out there tweeting pepe the frog or q anon memes or things like that you're unqualified you're not held to the high standards that we should all have of leadership yet donald trump for the past 12 to 18 months has posted over 550 QAnon memes on his wow. social media platform. In addition, in addition to the 30 posts every day where he goes, deranged Jack Smith, warthog Jack Smith, mad dog psycho Jack Smith. It's like, I, you know, I, I, I've changed my format in covering these Donald Trump posts because having done hundreds of them, I mean, they also kind of get boring. So I, I, I make sure I do the Biden ones at first to compare them to Trump and show the contrast in a different way. Because I read the, the 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 Trump ones and it's just like, I'll start reading. I'm like, all right, man, like we get over it. Like, buddy, like you are just a whiny, whiny, petulant, fascist baby. But speaking of the whiny, whiny, petulant, fascist baby. Of course, there's a criminal case against him in the Southern District of Florida. His co-defendant in that case, Walt Nauta, was supposed to be arraigned June 13th, but couldn't find a lawyer. He claimed a Florida licensed lawyer, that is. So it got continued to June 26th or 27th. I forget which one. But then at that one, his out-of-state lawyer, Stanley Woodward, showed up and said, you know what? I'm sorry. My client couldn't even make it because his flight got canceled. I guess he was too busy eating chili Philly cheesesteaks with uh, Donald Trump. Donald Trump's keeping Walton out to like basically like locked by his hip and he is not letting Walton out to go out of his sight. It's like such a bizarre thing to watch. So but the judge continued it to July 6th and finally Walton out to arraignment took place. He found a lawyer, Sasha Dayton, who has like billboards where she says like, are you like a drunk mess? Give me a call. Like some weird advertising there by his new lawyer, Sasha Dayton. But then earlier in the day, Walt Nauta said that he couldn't, he was not going to be ready by this status conference that's supposed to take place on July 14th. It's supposed to be what's called a SEPA status conference, Classified Information Procedures Act. It goes over the processes of handling the classified information, the discussion of an appointment of a classified information security officer. It's like one of the first big status conferences in the case. And Walt Nauta said, hey, my other lawyer, Stanley Woodward out of state, he's in trial, so he can't make it. And my lawyer, Sasha Dayton, she's not even familiar with the file. She hasn't even filled out the forms yet to be certified as a lawyer in this case, because even though she made her first appearance, 
She hasn't filled out her forms yet uh, to get the appropriate clearances to be able to be my lawyer in this case. So I need time. I'm not going to give you the date, Judge, but just please continue the July 14th uh, conference. I would say within minutes, Jack Smith like responded and like Jack Smith made the Walt Nauta motion look stupid because Jack Smith's like, OK, in Walt Nauta's motion, Walt Nauta claims that he didn't know that this was a hearing coming up on July 14th. Like the whole world knew this was a hearing. And by the way, we reached out to Walt Nauta's out of state lawyer, Stanley Woodward, and he didn't oppose our filing. He never told us that he was unavailable. We filed this with his consent on that date. And by the way, his other lawyer, Sasha Dayton, we don't care if she has the clearance yet. She should just show up at the hearing. So he's got two lawyers. One of them can show up enough with these excuses. And I think because the DOJ just made um, Walt Nauta's lawyers look so bad, surprisingly, like right before we were about to go live, Donald Trump's lawyer, Christopher Keis, who's known as being a more reasonable lawyer, whose approach is usually kind of compromise and let's figure it out and let's work together. He came up with, he made a filing saying that actually they would be available on July 18th and that, you know, the DOJ and, and them should all do it on July 18th. So I think the hearing will be moved from July 14th to July 18th, which is fine. But that's a smart move by Christopher Keis because you don't want to look unreasonable in that motion when especially playing with judge Eileen Cannon's schedule, because why pick that fight with her? If they believe this is what Christopher, I'm giving you the thought of Christopher Keis. I'm giving you the thought of the maniacal lawyer representing Donald Trump. Look, <laughs> we've got judge Eileen Cannon, who's probably on our side on bigger issues. Why would we pick a fight over this issue and potentially lose it and piss her off? Why don't we look like we're being reasonable? Because we are about to file a motion where we're going to be making our real significant ask here, which is to delay this case. I think this is my prediction. The filing could happen again any moment, even while we're live. It just hasn't happened yet. I think what Trump's going to request is a status conference to take place on trial setting after the 2024 election. Special counsel Jack Smith has asked for a trial date of December 12th of 2023. Judge Eileen Cannon gave Trump and Nauta until July 10th, um, midnight uh, East Coast time to file their response to that. So I think that Keist was like, we need to look reasonable on this one because we're going to make this request. Now, the other motion hasn't been filed yet. I could be completely wrong, but that's what I think the strategy is be behind it. And um, we will we will see what happens there. But Brett, Jordy, any comments you got on, on that one? No comments. Uh, we'll see how that story develops. We'll bring you all the updates as uh, as we always have been. Um, I think it, I am just like knee deep in this indictment. I'm like so fascinated by this other indictment. <laughs> I just keep looking it up. I'm just so curious. I, I just would love to get confirmation because there is a Trump advisor who is mentioned throughout this thing constantly. And I'm so curious to get confirmation Ooh. on who that is, if it is Bannon or if it is somebody else. Um, so I'm just I, I'm, I'm fixated on it, but you know we, okay. we're going to keep looking into it. And when we actually have the answers there, we'll be sure to let you know. But let's face it, Ben, with with the other situation, um, the, the other crimes, um, they they they, they got to assume right now that they have a friendly judge in Eileen Cannon. So it's like, why shoot yourself in the foot, so to speak? Like, why make all these unforced errors? Um, now, I'd be curious to just see how long. Chris Keiss's advice is taken uh, <laughs> by somebody like Donald Trump because Trump has uh, quite infamously, uh, you know, uh, pushed away Chris Keiss and his advice, which probably would have even prevented him from being indicted at all, and instead decided to go with the likes of uh, the incredible advice of non-attorneys uh, such as Tom Fitton and other uh, social media influencers and other types who just want to tell Donald Trump what he wants to hear. Um, so, you know, it, the ball's kind of in Trump's court with this one, but, you know, it's it's pretty clear that the Department of Justice at this point is not going to be putting up with any of these delay 
tactics. By now, let's face it, everybody knows the games that the Trumps are playing. Everybody knows what's going on. They do it every single time. You know that Nauta, Nauta's attorneys are being paid for by the Trump or by Donald Trump, by his super PACs. Um, the thing that really just baffles me, <laughs> they, they're, they're like volleying, Jordan and Ben are volleying back and forth. It's quite distracting next to me. Um, the thing that, you know, the, here, here's what I'm curious to get your take on as well. It's that we saw this video that you referenced before, and it was the video of Nauta and Trump in Vegas. And like, they may, they may as well have been like hugging the whole time. Like, like Nauta was within like yeah. two feet of Trump. Like uh, he was really keeping a very close eye. On right. You know, Walt's well, it's nickname. Yeah. Walt well, Nauta going anywhere. Oh, look at that. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Um, apparently he's now to going anywhere because Donald Trump doesn't want him going anywhere. Um, but as part of the conditions though, that the judge said here is he's not allowed to be discussing this case with now right? Does anybody, does anybody out there think that Donald Trump and Walt now are not discussing this case? Does anybody think that Donald Trump has the self-control to not bring up this case with Walt Nauta, the details of this case, the defenses, all of that. Do you really think that he cannot hold that he could hold himself back when he's around Nauta 24 7, seven days a week? I mean, give me a break here. Not even for one second. I bet it's literally the only thing he talks about. <laughs> I, I like, I can't imagine any other, any other conversation. It's that no. and probably get, grab me a Coke or something. You know? <laughs> Before talking about Fulton County, Georgia and the grand jury there. You saw this post by Jack White from the official Jack White Instagram account. So there was this, was it a UFC fight this weekend um, in Vegas yeah. that Donald Trump attended? And so he was there when, and Dana White was there and Guy Fieri was there and Mel Gibson and Mark Wahlberg. And they were all hanging what out a, with them. What a crew, huh? They were they were all hanging out with Donald Trump. Malignant narcissists, I guess, kind of flocked together. Dang, Wahlberg was kicking it with Trump. Wahlberg Wahlberg was apparently kicking it with Trump. Sad, right? Very sad. And 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 here's what uh, Jack White said, and, and and I love this quote. He goes, "Anybody who quote normalizes or treats this disgusting, fascist, racist con man, disgusting." piece of shit trump with any level of respect is also disgusting in my book that's you joe rogan you mel gibson you mark Wahlberg, you guy fieri this is a statement from me not a discussion debate jack white and he's right i mean that's the reality you know this isn't this 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 is life or death stuff right here you know and donald trump's conduct is lethal donald trump's conduct is destructive and donald trump's conduct is fascist and f to give him a platform to cheer for him to put your arm around him to laugh around him you know is really rep is really reprehensible and you know you are the company you keep so if the company you keep is donald trump it says it says a lot about you. And I think Jack White um, put it into, I think, very, very, very um, kind of precise and apt terms. And, you know, I, one of the things, too, I saw, Brett, you saw that interview that Donald Trump gave uh, with some press in Nevada also. And he like yeah. talked about like he said this. He said the state of Nevada is a disgrace. Like yeah, it was he, like a it was like a local, like an independent, like uh, not even like a big paper or anything. It was the Nevada Globe. It was called the Nevada Globe. And here, here's the inf the interviewer notes: Trump lost Nevada two times in the general election, and asked how he was going to win this time. Trump responded by saying he actually won both times by a lot, and then he called Nevada a quote disgraceful state. You know, one of the things about Nevada and the vote is they have, you know, with specifically the Vegas area, the unions are are so strong that represent the workers in in the hotels and the workers in Vegas. And it is a very, very, very kind of strong voting group that recognizes that this Trump crap is a total grift. They recognize that 
Trump will always stand against the worker at every single step of the way. And that's, you know, where, um, again, Biden's message is resonating, where Democrats' message is resonating, where where people who, who care about just the jobs and wages and and working conditions and and healthcare and you know and, and these are these are the issues that people wake up and think about or talk about or care about this is the stuff that affects their lives and so when i do that new format where i compare what biden's saying with what trump is saying it's always donald trump saying jack warthog oh my god the election of 2020 wah, wah, wah. you know when it's always president biden saying Here's what I'm going to do to continue to lower prescription drug prices. I know that medication could be expensive. Here's what I'm going to do. Here's how I'm going to help make education more affordable and accessible. Here's what I'm doing to make sure that women can control their body. Here's what I'm doing with veterans. Like, and that, and he talks about his actual policies. And so if that's what you're into in politics, like actually the government working and delivering for you and people who are trying to do their best, not always succeeding, but trying to do their best to deliver things. I don't know that, that that's kind of my view and version of, of politics. And, and that's why this democratic pro democracy coalition, I think is going to continue to expand. You know, one of the things I saw too, I don't know if you saw this because we were talking about Arizona before very soon, the independent uh, people who are independents in Arizona will exceed Republicans. Um, it's a that's about to take place. So the Republican Party is not going to be the biggest party, you know. And independents are going to be voting Democrats, be, and that's what we see time and time again, because they recognize that these MAGA Republicans are extreme. They see all John MAGA. They see you know the possum is going to be eaten by the bald eagle, and it's like, okay, what are you? What are you demonic? possession, you know, they're like, nah, I'm just going to vote for the Democrat who's, I may not agree with on everything, but they're going to like focus on issues and run the country and not be crazy and do their best. So yeah, that's where I'm going. Okay. Georgia, 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 Fulton County grand jury, um, selection set to take place on Tuesday, July 11th. You'll recall that uh, Fulton County District Attorney Fawny Willis took a two-step approach. The first was impaneling a special grand jury, which does a report and makes recommendations about indictments. Most of that report remains under seal today, meaning we can't see it. Only a few portions had the redactions removed, which didn't really tell us much. So when the grand jury is selected and people go, well, how, what's a grand jury? It's the selection process is almost like a regular jury. You know, people are called in, they get the letters, they show up, they're selected, they get impaneled. And then a prosecutor puts on evidence before the grand jury. It's usually not even a judge in the room. Um, and so the prosecutor manages the grand jury. Then at the end of the process, the prosecutor asks for an indictment. If ultimately there's some disputes that arise in the grand jury process, that could go before a judge to make decisions. But usually there's not really a judge who's involved in that process. Because the special purpose grand jury has already prepared its uh, report, one of the things that Fulton County District Attorney Phony Willis could simply do if she wanted to is just basically show that report to the grand jury and say, here's the summary of the other witnesses. Here is the report, what they're recommending. I'm going to ask that you indict based on the report. You could potentially just do that. I don't think that's all that uh, Fulton County DA Phony Willis is going to do. She's been using the time between the gap of when the special purpose grand jury finished its report and the selection of this grand jury during the fourth term of the Fulton County Superior Court. She's been flipping those fake electors and more and more of them have been cooperating with her. We've talked about that here on the Midas Touch Network with respect to other filings that have been made um, uh, before the grand jury has been impaneled. So I think she'll bring in some of those fake electors before the grand jury, perhaps some other witnesses that didn't testify already. And I, I think it'll be wrapped up in, in about two or three weeks. And 
um, based on previous correspondence that she sent to the sheriff's department, as well as internally to her office and to superior court judges. She's saying, like, be prepared for something big to happen in that July 31 to August 18th period. And so that's why we think that that's um, the date of when it's going to take place. We're going to cover it. There's someone named Ann Bauer over at Lawfare Reports as well. Anna and Bauer. She, Anna Bauer. Um, and she uh, she shows she she kind of shows up there at, at the courthouse and does some good reporting mm -hmm. outside. So that's what we got going on in Georgia. Alina Haba no longer representing Donald Trump anymore as well on any of the legal cases. So she was removed as Trump's lawyer on all of the like actual cases. I mean, she was sanctioned a million dollars with Donald Trump or close to it by a federal judge in the Southern District of Florida um, based on her representation of Trump in a special proceeding in New York. She was he was held in contempt and had to pay one hundred and ten thousand dollars there. She just filed that frivolous lawsuit against E. Jean Carroll, where she sued E. Jean Carroll for defamation as a cross complaint which was kind of like uh, horrific and and really, really disgusting. And I thought she was going to be sanctioned there. I still think she's going to be um, sanctioned there. And Joe Takapina wouldn't even uh, sign it. But Donald Trump says that she will now be the general counsel of the Save America PAC, which is under criminal investigation <laughs> by special counsel Jack Smith. So you got a lot. And she's also going to be the legal spokesperson. And we all know she always does a great job for Donald Trump when she appears on TV. So, you know, con congrats to Alina Haba and congrats to Trump on making that official as the official spokesperson for Donald Trump's legal issues. Alina Haba, what <laughs> more could you ask for if you're a defendant in some of the most serious criminal cases ever in the history of this nation? Jordy's going to get mad at me if I don't say this. We're better running out of conviction. better say it. You We're running it. out of convict 45 or convict 45 pins and shirts. You go to store.midastouch.com. 100% union made, 100% made in the USA. And we've got great gear at store.midastouch.com. So please make sure you check it out. Brothers, we got to record that exclusive pod for Patreon yes. tomorrow. Let's... Let's make sure we record the, we got these Let's great Q and A sessions. We're going to make it happen. Um, join our Patreon. It's different than the YouTube Patreon. You get exclusive first looks at our videos and we got to set the chat for the month of July as well, um, where we're going to meet with everybody. The last one we did lasted three hours long. Anybody who wanted to ask us questions could ask us questions. So that's what you get when you join Patreon dot com slash Midas touch P A T R E O N dot com slash Midas touch that helps support the growth of this independent platform. And we'll set that zoom. We'll, we'll get that podcast up, um, store dot Midas touch.com for the gear, become a member of YouTube for the emojis and for the badges and for all the fun we have at the live chats. For those who watch this only on YouTube, you can do us a big, big favor big help. If you subscribe wherever audio podcasts are available, subscribe to the Midas Touch podcast on audio as well. Audio listeners, make sure you subscribe to the Midas Touch Network YouTube page as well. Let's make sure we grow both of those platforms there. Is everyone following we'll, us on threads or what? Everybody, let's go. You gotta where, follow thread heads, heads, where, where, where are the thread heads? Thread heads, thread thread heads. heads. If, if, if you're on the new threads app, which is just a breath of fresh air, to be honest, I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I'm really enjoying seeing so many of you on the threads app and 131,000 of you have already joined us yeah, on threads cool. in like a few days. A pretty unbelievable um, that all you came over there and have joined us on threads, Keep it going. which, is, Keep it which going. is a great new home for us. So let's keep it going. Let's hit 140, 150, 200K. Let's build that following that we have on all the other platforms there on threads. We're posting content throughout the day, all day, because I am addicted to it. I'm not going to lie. By the way, we got a great Instagram as well. Great Instagram. Yeah, and they're and they're connected. So nice if you're following one, you have you have to follow the other one. Like, like I mean, you don't have to have to, but I'm telling you right now. like You should. You got, you should. You should it's do free. it. You should Just do it. You should do it. Free content, more content. Oh, I have Alex, another one. And Alex and Ani, our sponsor, is back. Alex and Ani used to do, I used to do legal work for Alex and Ani. Back I love in the that. Day. So That's it's such, such a full cool circle story. Moment. 
and the company is back. They're making some great charm bracelets to support Alex and Ani. We got hold on bags. I use hold on bags every single day. I mean, it's Real it's paper. really durable. It's good stuff. We've got the miracle made sheets. It makes me feel great. I'm getting good night's sleeps. I proved it. I proved it on Legal AF. I showed my sleep counter, and, and I give that as a testament to Miracle <clears throat> Made. People go, Ben, you don't get sleep. I do get sleep, and I love their sheets. Mosh tastes great, tastes great. I mean, enjoyable, gives me energy. And then, uh, you know, and then real paper. I think y'all know how to use real paper. <laughs> I, wanna, I won't go into any more detail than that, but, but, but make sure you're supportive. And I really love all of our sponsors today. It goes a big way to help our show. And then finally, you, the Midas Mighty. Really, thank you from the bottom of our heart. I just can't tell you. Like every single day, this is a dream come true for me, my brothers, to be able to spend this time with you. This is such an incredible community of intelligence, of love, of compassion, of humanity, of support for our democracy. It's everything I envisioned I'd ever want to be a part of. And it's really cool to be a part of this with you. And it's impossible to have this without you. So thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And we know that the most, the most important thing you can do, and we know that you do it, is when these shows end, Really, that's when the work begins. You spread the message, you share these videos, you tell your family and friends and coworkers all about Midas Touch, all about the Midas Mighty. And it's so cool to see new people joining the Midas Mighty community thanks to, really, it's your word of mouth and your um, emails and text messages just to everybody. And that's the best way you can help us. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for everything you do. And it is such an honor to be in this with you, making sure that we save our democracy together. Brett, final words. And my favorite comment that we get from people sometimes who want to like figure out like how you guys gain in all these followers, like how you guys have such a, like a dedicated base. And they go like, you, you guys must spend a lot on marketing, right? Yeah, you, must, never. you guys must spend a lot on commercials to get people. Never, not, not a single penny ever. It's all, it's all word of mouth. So huge, huge, huge. Thank you to everybody for sharing everything. Um, man, I am going to be, go back to reading this indictment right away. From the show. <laughs> and so I'm excited for that. I am also um, excited to see you all on threads. And so I will catch you all there. You can follow us all individually as well. And Jordy, why don't you take it away for the peeps out there? Shout out to the Midas Mighty. The Midas Mighty standing strong against the fascists. We sing our song. We will get it right at Midas Touch, we are unapologetically pro-democracy and we demand justice and accountability. That's why we're spreading our message to Convict 45. That's right, gear up right now with your Convict 45 tees and pins at store.midastouch.com. That's store.midastouch.com.